vibration. Every time I get ready to do something, I know it's um, somebody else, Kim. Well, yeah, her name is Kim, which is crazy because she's like the uh, doppelganger of the uh, drum major from my high school band. And I saw her at the world stage. She also plays the flute, which same instrument that Kim played, but she was like pushing a hundred or hundred and fifty something years old but, but um I don't know I feel like I lost sends people your way who you need to um talk to but she's the one who told me that Winton plays classical, you know, also and you know, I just been like um more into him since then. But um um, made this um, artwork. You know, I like to do art, and at first I was gonna submit it. Then I was like, no, I'm not gonna submit it because I know how um, people can be, especially when it comes to art. You know, art is something that comes from your heart. You know, it could be where they got the word art, but um, I had decided. I wasn't going to send it, and then I was like, well, you drew it, so just send it in anonymously, you know, and so I was um, preparing to mail it. I um, had a picture printed out, because I'm keeping my original, you know, and I was going to send a photograph of my artwork to the uh, people organizing the jazz festival, and so I went to look up the address because I was just gonna send it to Ben. I um I know um his address. I don't know why it's just now coming to me, but now that I think about it, I still might go ahead and send it. But when I went online, I um went to their website and they called it the third annual Merck Park Jazz Festival. And first I was like, why is it only the third? And then I was like, it's not the third if they calling it the third annual because Ben lies. And I know that uh, people lie because the art walk, he was talking about it's the fourth annual, ninth annual or something art walk. And I was like, no, it's not because I was at the first one and I remember exactly what year it started. But, um, people lie about how long they've been in business and how long they've been doing things, just so you know. So, um, first, it's not even being held in La Merc, you know. Um, it's at the mall, for one. So, that was, like, my first red flag. And I was like, hmm. Then I, at the very, very bottom in um, small print and got somebody's name in association with the world stage. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just send it to the world stage. And then it was like, just so you know, this is not the first. We got pictures from the second. I mean, um, from last year. So, you know, this is not the um, first probably the second but that I'm calling it the third annual and I'm like why you gotta even put that you know just say the Murray Park Jazz Festival that's what um uh made me suspicious you know why you gotta even say that it's just to um sell tickets you know get more people to come and I need to think about 
a car because if it's in the park, you know, it's free, right? But then I looked at the pictures and I didn't know one person. I saw a picture of Kamal and he looked like, why am I here? You know, and I was like, that tell you right there. It's not right. Then they show um, pictures of the performers. I know none of the performers. They show this um, drum group, and I'm hoping it's not the Shine group because it was a white girl on the um, drum. And I was like, okay, that's, you know, that's it for me. I'm definitely not going. And I'm, you know, thinking about um, just sending it because, for one, it's at the mall, you know. And to me, that shows corporate greed. All they care about is money. You know, just like this train that's supposed to go to the beach that stops at the mall, you know. And I'm like, the last stop is at the mall. And I'm like, you could have gone 50 more feet, you would have been at the beach. But they want to make sure people go to the mall. Because people get off the train, don't even know how to get to the beach. You know what I'm saying? When you um, take the train to Santa Monica. Anyway, um, my son. I showed him my uh, artwork and he was like, that's hard, you know, and um, he took a picture of it and so that's what gave me the idea to go ahead and um, have some prints made up. I was, um, you know, it's nothing like having a hard copy, you know, I got my actual drawing, then I got some pictures, I put on, took on my phone, now I put on Facebook and stuff, but to have an actual photograph, I mean, it's, um, rare nowadays, you know, I went to, um, CVS and it took me like two hours just to get the computer to cooperate, you know, you got to hook up connect your phone to the computer and then get your photographs on the computer and it's like five different ways you could do it don't none of them work you know I think I tried four different ways and because the fifth one wasn't an option for me and then I had to go through them like two three more times all four of them before I could actually get my pictures onto the um, computer. After that, it was easy, you know, but um, just the transfer of information is um, cumbersome. For some reason, I don't like that word. Probably because I now when I say it out loud, it um, sounds like the... Um, not a belt, but what men wear around their waist in a tuxedo. It's cumber bun, I think that's what they call it. Maybe that's why it's not a bun, but I think they call it a cumber bun. I don't know, I might Google that because I like fashion. But, um, I didn't want to say that word, cumber, cumber, cumber. Maybe because it sounds like amber. But I'm very much into um, languages, words, communication, you know, and you break it down to the sound. Like I was speaking, I went to the farmer's market this morning and I bought some roses. I left them by the water where the seagulls go on an accident, but I didn't have any water. And, um, you know, being homeless, water is a big deal but anyway I was speaking to her in Spanish and I always tell them I prefer Spanish to English because English sounds like <laughs> you know compared to buenos dias you know and um it's a softer you know language and if you hear someone from Brazil speak Brazilian Portuguese that's almost like Arabic because they sing it, and I'm like, 
you know, it's just really, um, I like the way it sounds, but anyway, you can, um, I would tell you a movie, but it's a, a tragedy, and I don't want the pressure, I don't even know why they make those, you know, because it's so many ways you could, like, it's a movie, you know, you can make it however you want it. You know, just change it, make it a happy ending, and no telling what effect that will have on the future. You know, because they say, um, you know, but I believe we can change it. You know, we have the power. So just um, always look on the bright side. You know, be positive, find the positive in the, um, everything. You know, it was raining and it got cloudy last night and that's the same thing that happened on um, Monday. It rained and it cleared up then it rained again and I prayed before I went to sleep my life, please don't let it start raining again, you know, because I'm out here, I'm homeless, right? And so I was like, um, when I woke up this morning, I was like, I'm just going to lie, you know, and I have to get up in the middle of the night and go look for shelter. But um, that's how the weather is usually. It'll look like it's going to rain, but it don't rain. But um, sometimes people like to um, try to get to me and they're like, it's going to rain. Look like it's going to rain. I'm like, I'm just going to lie, you know, water the plants because my spots you know, you find a clearing or whatever, and I love when I go back to an old spot and it's like grass, not grass, but green, you know, plants, clover, or something like that. It's rare, difficult to find grass. But, um, Alhamdulillah, um, they changed the name of a certain jazz festival that's always in June, baby. They calling it the Hollywood Bowl Jazz Festival. And this beat wants to get on camera, I think. You want to say hi? It's a black girl um, bee remover. She calls herself the bee maven. And I want to talk to her because I love honey. <laughs> you know, and um, bees. I always like bees, even when I was a little girl. When I first went to school and we used to draw, I used to draw cars. <laughs> I uh, used to draw a car that was kind of like a Corvette. But, uh, and bees. You know, I remember drawing that. Uh, that car and that bee. I didn't realize I was, realize I was that much into cars until right now because I was like when I had my son he could like tell you what kind of car it was by the lights when he was three you know and I was like you know I struggled with that because I was a baby in Islam and I didn't want him to get distracted by material things and um I was like, he gotta have something, you know. So, um, watch this. I was gonna show you the squirrel eating out my hand, but he don't know me. You know, the ones that know me they just come up and, and go, but. If they don't know me, then they got to, you know, creep up, take their time. But after I feed them maybe a couple times, by the third time, he'll take it, you know. They get closer and closer each time I go and film. But maybe it's difficult to film stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so the jazz festival changing, you know, the face of jazz. It, I'm like, I was reading a book by um, Winton. And I'm so ready for an autobiography, and this one was in the biography section. And I'm like, why is it in the biography section if he wrote it, you know? And it's the closest thing to a, a biography, autobiography so far was like 
a documentation um, a tour and to me it seemed like some photographer approached him with the idea and he was down you know he said okay let's get it and so it's kind of to me it's a coffee table book the photographs I'm wondering if the um, photographer no he's white I know because one photograph in there made me you know I'm sensitive and I see things in photographs and I actually had to cover that photograph up I didn't um, tear it out the book because of something on the other side and I think that was intentional because as a journalist you can um position words to have a certain effect, you know, and also for preservation, you know, whatever, but um, I know the uh, photographer was white, but um, he said something in that book, I can't remember because I got distracted with the photograph. It's like close to autobiographical, but And I'm ready for an autobiography. He uh, just you know, went on the road, but oh yeah, music, jazz, it's changing. And he mentioned, uh, you know, they meet a lot of people because most musicians travel. And so he put in like little uh, subplots. <laughs> in this um, book about his tour, like he was, it was this one couple in the audience, a guy named T-Bone, and I'm thinking when a guy named T-Bone is because they like, you know, steak or whatever, but he was called T-Bone because he played the trombone and he finally got this girl to go out with him, you know, and uh, he, it's funny, he said, he gave a description of what trumpet players are like, but he forgot to put in that they're funny. And, um, I don't know, I think all musicians, to be uh, successful, you know, use that as, um, you know, when you're good, you have to be intelligent, you know, especially to play with a band. But, um, T-Bone finally got the girl to go out on a date with him, and then he talked about this other lady, an older lady, who was like, these young guys don't know. They're not as good as Chester and his band used to be. And I was like, this morning I was thinking, I didn't know, but that was me. You know, I'm, I, she had, like, grandchildren when she got home. And they were, like, watching hip-hop naked videos late at night and when she got home. And, you know, um, when I got up this morning... The guys who used to play the Brandons are not there anymore. And I'm like, you know, I knew eventually they were going to leave because it happened to everybody. And I went to online looking at this jazz festival and a whole lot of them popped up, including the Hollywood Bowl Festival. And this being headlined by The Roots, which was one of the groups they used to play every month at the Hollywood Bowl. And it was just a core knit community of fans who used to be there every month to watch them, you know. And um, they got that uh, late night gig, you know, I want to call them on the Tonight Show, but uh, Winton was funny in that book. I marked the pages because I'm real serious, so if you can make me laugh or something makes me laugh, I like to hold on to those things because um, I like things that make me laugh out loud, you know, and he, his book, you know, I'm, I'm just glad I'm not a black man. Because even with the thing at the Academy Awards, the black men are focusing on Jada's infidelity. You know, why you let them get away with that, but Chris Tucker can't get away with, um, you know, pointing out, I don't even think she has that location. You know, I kind of know Jada, and um, she needs... Um, attention 
and so I'm thinking, because I know what people with alopecia look like, and she does not look like that, <laughs> you know, but maybe she just wants the uh, publicity, you know, so people think of her when they got a script or something, but um, he didn't get upset with August Alcina, you know, and the brothers are, like, focusing on that, and the sisters are, like, well, after she looked at him, like, and he was, because first he was, like, <laughs> you know, laughing, too, then he looked at her, and she was, you gotta get up there and do something, and then he got all mad, you know, was, okay, I gotta go home with her, so, like, the guy before that, the white guy didn't do nothing when he, uh, got in their bedroom, you know, but, um, music, jazz, you know, it's just changing, but the, uh, Hollywood Bowl Jazz Festival, and I think I want to say a little bit more about, um, the dynamics between the black male response and the black female response because um, I don't know, I have both. I have a son and a daughter. So I have to look at the my son's point of view also, you know. Also my because I'm a single parent. But um the brothers, you know, it looks bad because it's black on black crime for one, you know, and um, even their children's response is different because Willow was sad, you know, and Jaden was like, that's how we do it, you know, it's completely opposite. But, To me, the whole thing is sad, you know, and, um, the same night he got Best Actor, which is, like, going after, that's the biggest award you can get if, you know, that's what you really want to do, but people who, um, you know, know this country, know that they award the worst possible thing that you could do. And that award was for Venus and Serena's father. And I still say he was like, I don't want to use that word, but he was exploiting his children, you know, because it might be fun at first, you know, but they had to go all over the world with nothing but white people and who knows what they were subjected to. All type of racism like that young girl who tried to do what they did um, you know just recently and Serena was kind of mentoring her. She couldn't take it. You know she was like I don't want to play tennis that bad. And I feel like he might have forced them to um, do that because I see, I mean me myself, I kind of went through that, especially prodigies, child prodigies. Girls are different from boys. Girl prodigies, you're not supposed to know about them. Let them grow up and have a boy prodigy. And, um, you know, then maybe, but you got to I, I don't like seeing children, child actors, child musicians, even like the Jacksons. You see what happened to them? It's just, let them just play, you know? Make their education play, make it fun. You know, I read about, um, I feel like everything for children, everything in life should be enjoyable. You know, even things that you don't want to do. You know, take a spoonful of sugar. You know, guys look at things totally different. You know, I see how hard they are on their sons and I'm like, that's a nice way you can do it. You know, you don't have to um, 
Be mean. I don't know. Maybe that's just on me. And it's also could be because I'm a single parent. You know, if I had a husband who I could defer to, it might be different, you know. But that's probably why I don't. You know, because I feel very, very strongly when it comes to children, especially, and my daughter, you know, she's the one that's going to give birth to more of us. And I feel, I wish I had done so many things differently, you know. But I just did the best I can. And put it in our lives hands, you know. I met this guy today named God, this white man, and he acted like I was supposed to listen to him because why are you gonna tell me for one? Like my name is God. You don't talk to me like that. I was like, this is a beach community. We don't allow smoking. Because he was, like, from New York or something. I'm telling you, something's wrong with them people. <sighs> All those buildings. You can't see enough sky. You know, birds, trees. Make the people crazy. Harsh. You know. My name is God. Don't talk to me like that. I was like, man, if you don't put that cigarette out, go to the beach. My name is God. How come you're not doing what I say? I'm like, I'll have a seat, you know. Get you some fruit and go to the beach. Or go back to New York. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to go. It's been like 30 minutes, but I really wanted to um, talk to Winton and I write him, but um, I wanted to call him for some reason. I could probably find his phone number in some kind of way. Yeah, I think I just never had the um, courage to actually call, but I really wanted to. I might um, later. All right, assalamualaikum, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Keep on our first and everything you do, and how beautiful that. Assalamualaikum.